one of the things that, that really troubled me the most uh, when I was researching the book was a sense of the commodification of quiet that, that we confront today. And this has a number of impl implications, both in terms of the larger soundscape that we live in and in terms of individual lives. I mean, for one thing, it's amazing what's available right now in terms of quiet products. But these are invariably sold as luxury products. So if you're willing to pay two or three times as much, you can cut six or seven decibels off your washing machine or off your vacuum cleaner. But I think the minute that quiet becomes, whether because of the products you use or because of the fortress that you can build, a, a rich man's reward, you're creating a very, uh, a very dangerous dichotomy in terms of perceptual rights, as well as literal volume of sound in your lives. I think that our willingness to cede it to these larger commercial infrastructural forces has something to do with a sense of there's nothing there for us. There's no point in our taking the acoustical temperature of where we are anymore. Many, many people have no experience of silence left because in their own homes, there's always some appliance running or some device on and they go out into the world and it's dominated by farm machinery if they're on a farm or by traffic if they are in an exurb or a suburb. The, the ways that we have enabled very large, ultimately, corporate interests and then neglect through traffic, etc., to dominate the world that most people inhabit, I think means that we can't expect there to be more silence in the world.